Hello all, before going ahead in this particular session, let me give you a quick overview of what we have done in the last session. So in the last session, we have shed light on the data preparation area where we have deal with how to remove the invalid rows, right? Similarly, we have also deal with how you can actually remove the duplicate rows if you have. Similarly, we have also deal with how you can actually convert the data type from integer to date type. This is what we have done in the last session. Again, by the way, in context of life cycle, what we have discussed so far is, so in the last session, we have touched upon this data transformation section. So in this session, let's go ahead and try to do a data analysis so that I can make meaningful conclusions from the data by leveraging various visualizations depending upon the analysis that we are doing, right? Again, by the way, in this session, the problem statement is as simple as that. This is one of the most famous problem statement that every e-commerce company is willing to solve. Okay, can you analyze to what user Amazon can recommend more product? Can you analyze that? Again, from basic domain knowledge, you can say that, okay, Amazon can recommend more product to only those who are going to buy more product or someone who has a better conversion rate, right? Now, you might ask, what exactly is a conversion rate? So, let me put this term in a very simple English. So, imagine you have searched a particular item on an Amazon website, right? Let's say a iPhone or you can say any version of iPhone. Then, after searching this item, you have immediately switch to a YouTube, which is a video platform, just to watch any particular video. Then there is a high probability that you might encounter a advertisement regarding to purchase an iPhone. Now, the moment you will click on this advertisement, right, you will redirect to an Amazon page where you are going to buy an iPhone. If you will click on this page and if you are going to buy an iPhone, it means that that particular person has a higher conversion rate, right? Okay, again, by the way, in order to solve this problem statement, you typically need a data like that. Let me just zoom in. For every particular profile name, or you can say for every particular user ID, right? These are the number of the product a particular user has purchased, right? Which is one of the most important metric. And this is the average score he, he or she has given to product, right? And these are nothing but the total number of the summaries or the total number of the reviews a particular uh, user has posted. So as soon as I have this data, right, I can easily create such a bar chart. Look at this. This bar chart is saying that, okay, this is the user ID which has a count of 3 to 9, right? Look at this. This is a user ID which has a count of approximately 3 to 9. So as soon as you have this data, right? As soon as you have this data, you can easily generate a bar chart like that. You can say that, okay, these are the top 10 customers or these are the top 10 user IDs to which my Amazon can recommend more product. This is a meaningful insight. But at the end of the day, you need a data like that so that you can represent such a bar chart. Again, by the way, you can leverage tens of packages just to create such a bar chart. Tens of packages doesn't matter. So if I will say as let's say data dot shape, this is all about the dimension, right? Now, if I'm going to say as data dot columns, look at this, these are all the column names we have. So let me pick one of the very important feature, which is nothing but the profile name, right? If I will mention it and if I will execute it, these are the various names of the users who are going to purchase product, right? So if I will say as the moment I call, let's say the unique function just to get all the unique names, it says that, okay, these are the unique names. If I will call a any unique function, it will return a count. It says that this is a count, but there is a possibility that, right? A profile name could be same, right? There is a higher possibility. So instead of picking this profile name feature, let me pick a feature which is a user ID feature. 
if i will execute it look at this it says that these are the unique users it is not reflecting us the good result just because of the same profile name but it is telling us that okay this is the count of the unique users we have or the or the unique user ids we have now for each of the user id right what i need is i need a uh, stats like that okay what about the number of summaries what about the number of the text feature right or what about the number of reviews what about the average score or average rating the total number of the product purchased can you show me a data like that and that's where i can leverage a power of group by so let me call a group by function i will say that i am going to group data considering this user id feature right now i am going to call a various aggregations let me tell you okay this is the data what i need right so i need number of summaries it means on top of summary feature i have to call a count function so that i will end up getting the total summaries similarly on top of text feature right i have to also call a count function on top of the score right which is a average score i have to call a mean function similarly on top of one of the feature which is a product id feature right i have to call i have to again call this count function so that i will end up getting a data like that now in this aggregation function right i have to mention data in the form of key value pair or you can say i have to mention data in the form of dictionary where key will be my feature name on which i have to perform some operation and the value will be the function that i want to apply i can say that okay this is a dictionary right okay very first if i'm going to say data dot columns these are all the columns we have so the first feature i'm going to pick as let's say okay summary on top of the summary feature can i call a count function very very simple thing right similarly on top of this text feature right can i call something known as a count function but on this score right can i call a mean function right i can say just call a mean function and on top of this product id feature right can i call again this count function if i will execute this line of code this is what you will end up getting right again if you want to sort it you can just call a sort underscore values function on top of the data frame that you will end up getting if i will execute it okay unfortunately there is a error it says that you are going to miss a uh, argument which is a by it means that there is a parameter as a by in this function right i am going to say in this by parameter it means that considering what feature you want to sort it right okay very first let me show you one more thing if i will copy it and if i will paste it if i will execute it you will notice that this is a data frame i am going to say as just sort this data frame considering this product id feature just mention this feature and again execute it now this time you will observe that right this is a ascending order so if you want your data in the form of descending order i can say as the value of ascending will be false just again execute it and this is what you need i'm going to say just store it in a, let's say recommend underscore df right just execute it and if i'm going to print what my recommend underscore df is all about okay this is df just execute it this is data frame of which i am talking about again if you want to manipulate the column name it is very very simple you can say just call a uh, columns property on top of this data frame let me set as okay number of summaries right this is the first feature name the second feature name could be number of text right the third feature could be average score right the fourth feature could be number of products okay purchased it could be anything else it's all about the naming convention it's not rocket science just execute it and if i am again going to print what my recommend underscore df is all about this is what the data frame is very very simple so let's say i want to show the top 10 users right i can say that okay the moment i call the index 
right it will actually return all the indexes of this data frame if i will say can you return me the top 10 users i can simply use the concept of indexing on top of the list that you will end up getting just executed these are the top 10 user ids right similarly if i am going to access one of the feature which is a number of product purchased if i will execute it and if i say that i just need the first 10 values just executed these are the first 10 values right if i need all the values just call a values attribute so that you will end up getting a count just executed and this is what the array is now using the matplotlib let me call a function which is a bar function if you will see its documentation it is very very simple it says that what you want on x-axis i can say that okay this is the data right that i want on x-axis right now it says that okay what about the height i can say that height will be nothing but it's all about the values that we have just mention it and just execute this line of code this is a simple bar plot we have again if you want to get rid of this overlapping issue you can see that okay i can rotate these x ticks i can call one of the very fancy parameter or a fancy function which is a x ticks function over here i have one of the very fancy parameter which is a rotation parameter i can say just do a vertical alignment just executed now you will see that this is a bar chart that you need again by the way for those of you who have any doubt please do let us know 